Hello, I'm Dr. Gregory Davis, gynecologist here in Chico, California. I'd like to thank you for watching our videos. I hope that you'll find this information very helpful. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to take you through exactly what I talk to my patients about in the office. We're going to go through exactly how I diagnose, treat, and follow up our patients that have interstitial cystitis. Okay, as we, as we talk about interstitial cystitis, there's three symptoms that most all patients have. They may have either pain, they may have urgency, or they may have frequency. Ladies with interstitial cystitis will, will notice they have that urge to go, and when they got to go, it's like, man, I, I've got to find a bathroom, I've got to find a bathroom quickly. And, it, and sometimes they'll have such a strong urgency that if they don't make it to the bathroom on time, they may actually leak a little bit. There's ladies that will have not so much urgency, but they have a lot of frequency. I mean, they just seem like they're going all the time. And then there's the third group of people that may also have a pain component. And this can be really, really difficult. These ladies that have this pain component, it, it can be very incapacitating. So I tell you what let's do. Let's look at the anatomy and let's talk about what's going on in the anatomy. And that's going to help us to understand why they may have pain or urgency or frequency. So if we take a look, I've taken off the front of the bladder, and if we look inside the bladder, there's a couple things I'd like to point out. The first thing is, here's the wall of the bladder. The ureters coming down from the kidneys are the tubes coming down, and then the urine comes squirting out on both sides, and of course the urine leaves the bladder through what we call the urethra. Now, this triangle area is what we call the trigone. And the trigone is made up where the two ureters come in and then the urethra leaves. Now one of the things I want to point out to you is these areas that we've colored red and that's the floor of the bladder and we call the trigone and then the bottom of the urethra. What's interesting is that these red areas are estrogen dependent. So these are the only part of the bladder that are estrogen dependent. So these develop from the same origin as did the vagina. So if, if you're having problems with the dry vagina or yeast infection or irritation, guess what? You're going to have the same thing going on inside your bladder. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that when you think of the urethra, it's like a tube. And the bottom portion of that tube is estrogen dependent. So when you don't have enough estrogen and that lining becomes thin, one of the other things that can happen is that ladies will start to leak urine when they cough or laugh or sneeze because it can't completely close. But let's get back to the interstitial cystitis. So ladies that have a thinning or not having enough estrogen will make this so that when they get acid urine, so when they eat something that's acidic and it comes into their bladder, instead of just sitting in the bladder, it leaks through this damaged layer here because there's not enough estrogen, and then it hits the sensory nerves. Now that's the other thing that's important is that this part of the bladder is the only part of the bladder that has sensory nerves that gives you a sensation of pain. So when the acid urine leaks through and hits those sensory nerves, a tremendous amount of signals are going to go up to the brain giving the sensation of pain. Now, we talked about ladies that have urgency and frequency. Interesting thing is, is that when I look in their bladder, they will have more irritation up here in the walls, the, the, the roof of the bladder, or the sides. So whenever there's been damage to that area, ladies will have more of the urgency and frequency. So when I take a look in somebody's bladder with the scope, and they're under anesthesia, and I'm taking a look, depending on what areas are inflamed, I can tell you usually what kind of symptoms that they're going to have. So, why do they have the symptoms of urgency and frequency? Well, let's talk about that. What happens is, is that as we lose this lining, and it gets damaged from a bladder infection, or it gets damaged from uh, having had a catheter inside there, or not having enough estrogen, when that acid urine comes into the bladder, it leaks through this damaged layer, and then in the muscle of the, of the bladder, it hits the mast cells. There's lots of mast cells in the muscles, and those mast cells do just like they do in your nose. They, they release histamine, and the histamine causes the bladder wall to swell. So when the bladder wall swells, the nerves on the outside of the bladder that are there to tell us when we're full start firing and sending a signal to the brain, and they say, hey, we're full down here. Well, the brain goes, well, for crying out loud, if you're full, go to the bathroom. So it sends a bunch of motor signals back down, and your bladder spasms, and you're like, 
I got to find a bathroom. I got to go now. So that's where that urgency and that frequency comes in. The interesting thing is, is that when the signals from the bladder that are causing pain, when that happens, it goes to a different part of the brain that senses pain. And I'm telling you, when that part of the brain gets lit up, it sends a whole bunch of signals back down and you get this tremendous spasm in the bladder. The difference is when you get a bladder spasm, there's not anything you can do. You're just going to have to ride it out. Whereas, you know, when we get a leg cramp, you know, we walk it off, we stretch our leg, it goes away. But when you get a bladder spasm, you get tremendous amount of pain. So, as you can see, ladies that have pain or have urgency or have frequency, there's very distinct areas that are damaged that we're going to talk about ways to help heal that so that those symptoms go away. Okay, let's talk about a little bit more as we look at the bladder, talk about ways that we can start treatments. And there's some things that you can do starting today that are going to help you with your urgency and your frequency and maybe even with your pain. So if we look at our diagram here, we've got the mast cells here which are releasing histamine. We've got muscle in the wall of the bladder. We got this trigone, which is, of course, estrogen dependent. So the first thing is, if somebody is low on estrogen and they don't have enough estrogen, then we're going to need to give them some estrogen. So one of the things we're going to need to do is that we're definitely going to need to give them some estrogen. So estrogen is key in making sure that this treatment is going to work. The next thing is, we talked about the urine being very acidic. And instead of worrying about your diet and, and, and trying to be on this strict diet that's low in acid, it's, it's really hard to follow. I would encourage you that we take something called pre-leaf, which will neutralize your urine, and then you can just eat pretty much what you want to eat and just take the pre-leaf tablets and they neutralize your urine. So pre-leaf is an old-fashioned and acid medicine that doesn't do much for your stomach, but it works really well for, for neutralizing the urine in your bladder. So pre-leaf are tablets that are calcium glycerophosphate. So if you just take two tablets before each meal, then what that's going to do is that's going to neutralize this urine that's acidic. So no matter what you're going to eat, you're not going to pay for it by irritating your bladder. The second thing is, since you've got mast cells releasing histamine, we're going to need to take an antihistamine. So AH stands for an antihistamine. So you can go to your local pharmacy and pick up a generic Claritin, Zyrtec, or Allegra, and you take that every day, and that stops these mast cells from releasing histamine. You're taking pre-leaf to kind of neutralize your urine, and then if you've got tissues that look low on estrogen, you're taking estrogen. Right away, you've got done three things that are going to really help to decrease your symptoms of urgency and frequency. It may actually even decrease your pain. The fourth thing that you can do, which is pretty simple, is to just make sure you hydrate. If you drink plenty of water, then you're diluting this acid urine and it's not going to be as irritating to your bladder. So the thing to remember, if, you, if you're dehydrated and your urine is very concentrated, just like your glass of grape juice that you leave sitting on the counter, where does all that concentrate go after several hours? Well, it's going to go right to the bottom of the glass. Well, same thing. If your urine is very concentrated, then it's going to settle on the lowest part of your bladder, which is the trigone, which is the most sensitive, which is, gets the most irritated. And that's why it'll cause a lot of burning right at the end of when you're voiding. So it's really important to make sure that you hydrate. Now, the other thing is, is that we've got all of these sensory nerves going to the brain saying, hey, we're full down here. And then the brain is sending all these motor nerves back down saying, okay, got to go, contract. So what happens is that if you look at all those medicines that are advertised on TV, the got to go, got to go kind of medicines, those medicines, those what we call antispasmodics, they just block this pathway right here. So I'm just going to write meds. They just block this pathway coming back down to the bladder. Well, it seems like that should be very successful and that should work well. Well, the thing is, is that I think of the nerve pathways coming back down to the bladder as kind of like a freeway. They, these medications may block one lane of traffic, but you may have three, four, five lanes of signals coming back down, and especially if the floor of your bladder is the most irritated. The brain is going to send lots and lots of motor signals if you have irritation down here in the floor where the 
pain receptors. So the medication is only going to block one lane of traffic. It's not going to block all the traffic. So what's going to happen is that it may help with your symptoms, but it's certainly not going to alleviate those symptoms. So what we do to kind of help alleviate those symptoms is that we make up a little cocktail solution in our office, and that solution contains a, a bicarbonate, which kind of neutralizes your urine. It contains lidocaine, which kind of numbs up your bladder. It contains heparin, which is, I know it's a blood thinner, but blood thinner actually helps to rebuild this lining inside the bladder. And then the final thing is, is we take a medicine called Elmeron, and Elmeron helps with healing. We weren't quite sure how that worked, but we now know that, that women and, and men that have uh, interstitial cystitis have an anti proliferative factor. So what's happening is that when you get damage to your bladder, your bladder tries to heal and that's a normal process and that process is called proliferation. Well what happens with interstitial cystitis patients is that they make this anti-proliferative factor so no healing occurs. So you just continue to have this damaged wall of your bladder so the urine continues to leak through there and irritate the bladder. So we think that the Elmeron works by suppressing the anti-proliferative factor. If you suppress that, then you're going to allow the estrogen, the prelief, the antihistamine, the hydrating to start this healing process, and then your bladder starts to get better. The only problem is taking this medicine orally has some side effects and it's quite expensive. So if we take that medicine and we put it directly into your bladder, it's going to work a lot quicker, it's going to have a lot less side effects, and you're going to be a lot happier. So we make up a custom solution that has Elmeron, it has heparin, has lidocaine, it has some bicarbonate. And so we put that in the bladder twice a week with a small little catheter and it takes about seven or eight minutes. Once we put that solution in there, we let it sit in there for four hours. You don't have to stay in the office. You, they, they, they can go home. Patients can leave and go home. But if they hold that solution in there, then that starts, with the, helps, that starts to help with the healing uh, process. Now, the interesting thing is for those of you that have urgency and have frequency, these bladder installations work really well. I, I would say the success rate in alleviating symptoms is probably 90 plus percent. So they work really well. Now, the problem is the people that have pain. The pain, those patients are difficult to heal because the longer these signals have been going to the brain, the more of a memory, a pain memory that the brain has made. And so it's interesting. There's nine places in our brain that sense pain from no matter what part of our body. So the part of your brain that senses the pain from your bladder gets ultra dialed into this bladder and any little signal coming up it sends a whole bunch of signals back down. So the healing helps for people that have pain but it may not completely alleviate those symptoms. So there is a treatment which we do and the treatment is called PTNS. It's called percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation. And this is kind of an, in, uh, an ingenious idea because what it is, is that it's a way of blocking these nerves going to the brain and back down to the bladder. So if, if you, you have or your sciatic nerve, you've heard of people having sciatica and they kind of get that pain down through their buttocks and down through their legs. That's the biggest nerve in our body. Well, that nerve splits in your buttocks and it goes, the nerve going down the inner part of your leg is called the tibial nerve. The nerve going down the outer part of the, ne the leg is the fibular nerve. So if we could take an acupuncture needle and right down near your ankle, put in an acupuncture needle, put a grounding pad on your foot, hook up a little nerve stimulator with a certain frequency and you just sit in a nice leather recliner for 30 minutes, what's happening is we're using that tibial nerve to get to your spine up to the level of L4. Every part of your nerves to your bladder come from L4 on down. So if we put this acupuncture needle in and use your tibial nerve to get to L4, that's essentially like we put in an epidural or spinal to block your sensory nerves. So what's happening is that this treatment is blocking these nerve pathways right here and it's blocking these nerve pathways and it's blocking all the lanes of traffic over here. So for 30 minutes there's no signals getting up to the brain and so the brain all of a sudden goes, 
hey, I'm not getting any signals. That bladder must be getting better. The flip side of that is none of the signals are getting down to the bladder. And so you got to remember the bladder's been sitting down here contracting, contracting, contracting. And so now all of a sudden there's no signals come down. The bladder goes, yes, we can relax down here. We don't have to contract. And when that happens, then all of a sudden your urgency goes away, your frequency goes away, and, f and usually the pain will start to go away. The thing is about the pain, the longer you've had these pain symptoms from your bladder, the longer it's going to take for that process to retrain the brain. Because all of this happening here is subconscious. You have, no, you have no idea what's happened during this whole process. But as we do these tibial nerve treatments and you start to notice that you have less urgency and less frequency and less pain, then you say to your family and your friends, you go, you know what, I think I'm having less urgency. I think I'm having less pain. You know what, I think I'm doing better. Now you're consciously sending signals to your brain saying, yes, this bladder is getting better. So now you've got conscious input, you've got subconscious input, all of a sudden your brain starts to downregulate. As it downregulates, then all of a sudden your pain starts to go away, your urgency and frequency go away. I would say the success rate that we have with treating uh, to getting the pain to go away is probably 70 percent. It's actually been pretty phenomenal. These the patients that get treatment, get success from this, are probably some of the happiest patients that I've ever had. So the key thing is, is making sure that we do these treatments on a frequent basis. They initially were done once a week and we found out that the, the, the patients were doing well for three or four days and then their symptoms came back. So we did them twice a week and then we noticed they were symptom free the entire week. So we treat twice a week for six weeks, reevaluate. If they're doing well, they get to graduate to the once a week class. If they're doing well after four treatments. Then we go to every other week for two treatments. And then we ultimately go on once a month long term. Because interstitial cystitis is a chronic condition. And so we try to get the bladder in what I call remission. So you're back to being normal. And then once we get it back to being normal, we can cut back on these or we can cut back on the installations. You still take your pre-leaf. You probably still take your antihistamine. Obviously you're going to keep taking the estrogen. The Elmeron you may be able to slack off on that and see. And as you just do whatever we can to kind of keep you from getting a flare up. I recommend if we're doing the installations or the tibial nerve treatments that we do those on a once a month long term basis. The dilemma comes in a little bit in the fact that insurance companies obviously regulate a lot of what we do. Insurance companies, specifically Medicare, pays for the bladder installation, it pays for this tibial nerve treatment. The Blue Cross, Blue Shields don't, they consider it this experimental and investigational, even though it's FDA approved, even though Medicare covers it. And that's, unfor that's very unfortunate. But it does work, and, but the insurances pay for the bladder installations. Okay, let's just summarize here real quickly on interstitial cystitis. So the main symptoms are urgency, frequency, and pain. If we look at diagnosis, things that are important are history. Having that urgency, frequency, having to go to the bathroom frequently, can't sleep through the night, those kind of things. So th those are the symptoms that we look for on a history. The next thing we do is we do a physical exam. And on the physical exam, I'm checking to see if the estrogen status is normal or low. I'm checking to see if the bladder is tender. I'm looking to see if there's any kind of prolapse of the tissues from having had uh, previous babies. Third thing is, is that there's a questionnaire called a PUFF questionnaire, and you'll find that on our website. You'll also find that in the Interstitial Societies Association has that, uh, and it's a very useful uh, questionnaire. Voiding flow study, that's a simple test where you just sit down like on a bedside commode and you just sit down and void. And it's, it's really interesting because how fast and how you void can go right along with having a diagnosis of interstitial cystitis. Patients that have IC, they have a tendency, instead of having this nice bell-shaped type of curve when they void, they, they go up 
they void and they bear down. Then they bear down again, they go and bear down again. So we call it that kind of valve salve, that kind of bearing down to void. There will also be where they go up and they void and then it just plateaus and it goes down and plateaus. That plateauing is a bladder spasms. So the voiding flow study is a simple test we do in the office and it can tell us right away if somebody's having these uh, spasms in their bladder. The final thing we do, which I do, is a cystoscopy. I do it in a surgery center. It's a 12-minute surgery. I'm just looking in the bladder and I'm doing two things. First of all, I'm finding out, are there anything is there anything else going on in the bladder that could cause you to have uh, uh, bladder spasms? Is there signs of stones? Is there signs of any type of tumors? Uh, and that's kind of rare. The second thing we're doing is that we're stretching the bladder to get it back to normal. Ladies that have interstitial cystitis have a small capacity. And so we stretch the bladder while they're under anesthesia. And then the third thing is I put a, a, a solution in the bladder, that rescue solution we talked about earlier, and that starts the healing process. So the surgery is very short, takes about 12 minutes. I would not recommend having cystoscopy ever done in the office if you think you have interstitial cystitis. If the floor of the bladder is irritated and you have a scope going in, that can be extremely painful. So I would, I would highly recommend not doing that in the office. For treatment, we talked about prelief neutralizes that urine. Antihistamines stops those mast cells in the wall of the bladder from releasing histamine. Estrogen helps that floor of the bladder. Elmeron suppresses that antiproliferative factor and allows healing to occur. Bladder installations, those are very successful. And the percutaneous tibial nerve stimulation is also very successful. So the final thing I'd like to say is that don't despair. There's a lot of good things that you can do to help with your bladder. There's lots of things we can do to get rid of your urgency, your frequency, and your pain and get you back to normal.